Let's uh, get started this morning. Uh, my name is Robert Wheeler. I am with um, Electronic Marketing Associates. We are the manufacturer's rep for all of the core brands' lines. Um, Niles, of course, being one of those, Panamax, Furman, so forth. So, um, got a lot of good stuff to talk about with Niles. Uh, there is a lot of really cool products, uh, one of which is sitting here on the table. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about this. Uh, it, thank you, Bob. Um, so, um, the, uh, we're going to start out talking a little bit about speakers. Uh, then we will take a, a little bit of a, a break, do a little raffle, and uh, after we uh, do the raffle, we'll get into the uh, Ariel system and uh, talk a little bit about multi-room. So, let's get started. So, Niles has been around for, got a nice big mute button here in our way. There we go. So Niles has been around since the late 70s, actually started um, in a garage, just like every other large company that's out there in the world. Uh, and uh, it was started by a man named um, uh, Niles Zuckerberg. So uh, actually Ivan Niles Zuckerberg. He went by Niles, and obviously that's why we named the company Niles. He's been around, well I guess, guess we didn't get rid of the mute button. that guys. So Niles came about uh, making a switcher first. Yes sir. Turn the volume up one notch on that. That's what I did and it, it switched inputs here. There you go. There we go. Okay so they, uh, thank you. So they uh, started out making a speaker switcher. Um, wasn't that you know multi-room was a big thing in, in the late 70s, but people had two and three pairs of box speakers and they wanted to be able to switch between them. So that's what, uh, what he created. And uh, he kind of worked with that out of his garage for, for some time and it started picking up and, and he started making new products. Uh, moving forward quite a bit, he uh, got into uh, doing architectural speakers, which has uh, become quickly a, a big part of, I'm sure, everybody's everyday business. He was one of the first out there to do architectural speakers. So, there's a little bit of a timeline on some of our products. We introduced our first in-wall speaker in 1988 and in-ceiling speakers in 1990. Rock speakers in 2004, which everybody uses today. Uh, we brought out, um, after our Niles Rocks, we brought out a system called, um, uh, oh my gosh, I just lost it. Stage, stage front, thank you. Um, our stage front system was actually really, really cool. With stage front, essentially we, we brought a more affordable option for like your big JBL synthesis type systems. You could run it off of our big 12 channel amplifiers or independent amplifiers. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, uh, as well received by the consumer. They took up a lot of space, they were huge. It sounded awesome, but they were big. So a lot of guys just couldn't fit them into projects, especially as people started doing media rooms instead of dedicated rooms and things like that. Uh, and then in 2010, we introduced our current uh, in-ceiling speakers. So it's, it was a bezel-less speaker. We were one of the first bezel-less speakers out there. Um, when, we, uh, when we brought those out, they were kind of uh, really innovative. We've made a few changes over the years, but essentially it's the same driver, same tweeter uh, in the current models today as what we have, uh, what we brought out in 2010.
So, why Nile speakers? Well, we've focused on being audiophile speakers since the beginning. Um, one of the things that uh, has always been a, a big thing with Niles is how it sounds. You know, we want it to sound natural. We want it to sound uh, like a pleasant listening experience. Now, not Nile speakers don't sound like a lot of other speakers out there. They're not very forward. They're very natural and smooth sound. Um, how many of you guys have been using Niles? Uh, before, so few, few guys. Okay. So the new line was kind of formed with the designer in mind. The big thing was, you know, of course, being an architectural, being able to uh, put these into uh, spaces and, and really not see them, just hear them. So that's one of the things that uh, we've kind of excelled in. Now we have models that start in the four inch range and go up to eight inch. Uh, we only have a few brackets, so you don't have a whole bunch of brackets to use. Um, DS and ICS models, we've kind of gotten out of the ICS models. The ICS models um, were great. They were just uh, not a lot of guys selling the, uh, the uh, real high-end speakers at the time. And so we kind of discontinued those, but still have a few of them left uh, that are out there, a little higher performance. You'll notice on the uh, back of the speaker here, there's what we call a rear wave enclosure. It's basically a molded plastic enclosure. Um, it's elongated, but it allows you to slip it up through the hole that you cut for your uh, ceiling speaker and gives you quite a bit more bass. Now, we still sell those. Those were standard issue on the, the uh, ICS speakers, but we still sell those for the uh, DS line of speakers. All of our speakers are sold in uh, as eaches versus pairs with the exception of our FX speakers. We'll talk about those here in just a minute. Um, so you can use them for LCR, you can use them just as a stereo pair, however you want to do it. A lot of multi-room systems these days are using mono or blended stereo. You can use uh, you know, just a single speaker if you'd like in those applications. And then we have a variety of different performance levels so that you can match the uh, the room that you're in. So if it's a room that they just want background music in, we have a background speaker. If you have something you want a little more performance in, we have a performance speaker. So we also make square grills for all of our products. Um, they are in addition to, so it's not kind of either or. When you buy your speaker, you're gonna get a round grill. Um, it's addition very small additional cost to get a square grill, and you can just uh, get rid of the uh, round grill. Oh, wrong way. So, brackets. Um, we only have four. That's a good thing. Uh, the more brackets you have, that fit multiple models, uh, it kind of gets confusing. Guy ends up out on a job site, has the wrong bracket, and so forth. In our particular case, we have a four inch bracket, a six inch bracket, a seven inch bracket, and an eight inch bracket. So no matter what series of speaker you're using, if it's an eight inch speaker, there's one bracket. So that's all you have to carry for that, that uh, series. So one of the other uh, features that we have uh, with all of our speakers, we have stainless steel screws. Um, why is this important? A lot of our speakers are waterproof or weatherproof. Uh, so you can stick them outside in soffits. You can put them, uh, we have a lot of guys that put them in showers, uh, things like that. So bathrooms, wet areas, um, garages, so you can put them into these areas, not worry about a paper cone that's going to crumble or, or have problems. It's got a you know, rubber surround, um, so forth. Pivoting tweeter on every one of our models, uh, just so you know, it, it's, it's consistent across the line. Our DS models have a uh, pivoting baffle. You'll notice uh, also we only have three screws. Uh, we found that 
honestly, you really only need three points of connection to, to secure that speaker in drywall. You also have a lot less risk of popping drywall, uh, you know, screwing it down too tight. Um, it's spring loaded, so when it pops out, it, it's going to suck it, you know, to, as close as it can, and then you just have to tighten it down. Honestly, a lot of guys don't use a, a drill on them, they use just a screwdriver because it's a pretty tight, tight fit and easy to do. So FX models are sold in pairs. I kind of mentioned that uh, our FX are f designed for uh, rear surround applications. So anytime you see an FX, it's going to come in a pair. Um, most guys aren't putting in a, a single speaker and doing 6.1 anymore. So uh, it, there was no, we used to sell them in, in singles. It just doesn't make sense anymore. Especially now with Atmos and things like that, you're not, not exactly selling a single speaker. But all the rest of our models, again, you can sell them as an LCR. Very low profile. Um, we do have a little bit of a bezel around the outside edge. It gives a real clean beveled look to it. Um, I didn't have the guys bring one up, but I'm sure you've seen them before. They are extremely low profile, uh, and it's a nice look. It blends into the ceiling extremely well. All of our grills are paintable. They have a uh, micro thin uh, appearance so that you know there's not a, a, a large hole to look through and you can't see speaker behind it. We also have felt lining the back of them. So, Is that removable? The felt lining? Yes. There's a little bit of glue tacking it down, but it's very little. So when you go to paint them, definitely remove it. You can put it back or you don't have to. It's up to you. Uh, and again, rust proof, which is uh, huge. Early on, they had put uh, steel grills in there and then powder coated the grills, which was great until they were in a wet environment for about a year and then we had a problem. Now they've gone through, changed that process. And uh, honestly, uh, we just don't see problems with the grills. They are a much better performance uh, product than what we originally came out with. So the other thing is they're completely modular. So with the way that we've built these, you actually can get uh, parts for just about anything. Uh, we do stock all of the parts if you do have a problem. Um, most of the time, though, if it's a under product under warranty, they're just going to give you a new one or, or send you a new one. So higher output, lower distortion uh, woofers. Um, it's they're, overall the performance is great. Our seven-inch uh, drivers. Uh, I can. I've been selling this particular product line for five years, and and I bet overall, uh, other than maybe a few abuse cases, I have not taken back hardly any of these things. They just go out. They work. Never get them back. Again, perfect for uh, home theaters. Um, it's an upgraded performance over previous models. So if you're familiar with our older speakers, um, it's way better performance. The tweeter's different. The uh, woofers are completely different. The way that they uh, design the crossovers is completely different. Uh, we had, like I said, we've made some upgrades to it, uh, mainly crossovers. Uh, over the last couple of years, uh, really haven't been any ma major model changes. Later this year, we will see some model changes in the uh, in-wall line. So that's something that uh, that'll be coming, but uh, not not quite here yet. Hopefully, Cedia. Uh, all of our in-wall speakers currently have bezels, which is the thing. They just don't match our in-ceiling speakers. So just be aware of that if you're selling a home theater with in-walls. You're going to have bezeled speakers for your fronts or your in-walls. So we also have a 4-inch. Now this guy's kind of unique. Uh, of course, when you're working on a home with uh, designers, they want to have as little a profile available for sound. Okay, now four inch is a pretty small size and there's a lot of them out there. We have a rear wave enclosure on all of ours. It gives it a little bit better performance, a little bit better bass. Um, these things really do sound pretty good. Uh, I do still recommend using a sub with them. You're going to get better performance no matter what. Um, they are $249 each at retail. 
They uh, clip into the ceiling, they do not screw down. Uh, you can also get a square grill with these guys. But small footprint, again, rear wave enclosure and square grill. We have a, uh, our CM7SD, which is a shallow depth. Uh, so you guys doing any condos or townhomes where you've got shallow ceilings or things like that, uh, this is perfect for that. Uh, we, I just walked a house last week with one of our dealers that uh, he had, it's a, actually a very large home, 17,000 square foot, and he has a home theater in there and 7.1 theater. The surround speakers were no problem. The surround back speakers, he had a beam that was about five and a half inches above the speakers and he just didn't have room for a full in-ceiling speaker. These worked out perfectly in that application uh, amongst others. It is a full enclosure. Yes? Is that an enclosure on the back? It is. It is a full enclosure. It's molded plastic. Um, again, it's got our, our three screw easy mount set up. It's, it's a great speaker and they sound really good for a shallow depth enclosure. Is that kind of a six inch or a seven inch? Or just it's a seven inch. Seven. Yeah. It's a, it's a CM7 SD. So these are also 249 each. Two and an eighth inches deep uh, steel back can. So uh, that's the other thing. It is a steel back can. So in an MDU application, you're not going to have bleed through into other areas. Uh, so that can definitely help you in, in as a selling feature. And it sounds good enough. I mean, I could sell it for you know, music listening or home theater. I, I wouldn't hesitate. It sounds that good. See, so it even says, said, said it sounded great, right? You gotta believe it. So this is our seven inch model lineup in the, the CM line. So the CM line is a, a fixed woofer and a pivoting tweeter. We have uh, our CM7BG for background, uh, CM7MP for multi-purpose use, uh, CM7PR for performance, and CM7HD. So these, uh, these are all retail prices, guys. So, And then, uh, of course, our FX speaker and our CM7SI and one square grill. So one square grill fits them all. Kind of a kind of a nice feature. So if you do have somebody that wants that, and more and more modern homes are going up, and it seems like that's becoming more of more of a request. When we first brought it out, our sell through was just terrible on square grills. Nobody was using them in a ceiling. Uh, so, but it's really definitely picked up in the last year. Now we also have some eight-inch models in the CM line. Uh, we have no background uh, in this particular uh, model. It seemed like we didn't have a lot of sell through there. So we kind of ditched that model, jumped up to uh, our multi-purpose and performance and HD speakers. We also do not have an eight inch FX speaker. And uh, what we found is there's no benefit for us to have that. Uh, performance wise, you get the same amount of information out of the seven inch that you would out of an eight. Uh, aesthetically is the only thing that, that makes a difference. If someone doesn't want to see a seven inch speaker and they just want all eights around, uh, you know, I don't know, it's, it's a question. An eight inch grill, square grill fit on a seven inch speaker. Uh, good question, yes, it will. So you can order in um, eight inch grills uh, for that application if you want. Okay, compact subwoofers. These are actually some of my favorite products. Um, I actually have this same subwoofer at home. Uh, I use it in my uh, one of the rooms for kind of fill for a multi-room zone I have. They're really lightweight, uh, sound really, really good, but they have some really cool installation features to them. Uh, first of all, they have mounting screws. Anybody here do commercial applications? Okay, a few of you. So we actually have, you can, you can buy speaker mounts for these. Mount them either upside down in bars. Um, you can mount them on the wall. 
Uh, I walked into a uh, restaurant in Texas when I was there a couple months ago, and uh, they had, had two Nile subs kind of hanging on the wall for, for subwoofer fill. It's really kind of a cool product, though, when you add in some of the other features that it has. Uh, again, small footprint, big sound quality. You have the ability to run it with an audio bail-in directly into it, so you can run Cat5 signal to it. You don't have to, um, don't have to run an audio cable to it specifically. And then we also have our wireless kits. So our wireless kits are kind of cool as well. Uh, we've thought this through quite a bit. One transmitter will work with two receivers, and the receiver can actually screw right to the back of the sub. There's, this is a transmitter, but our receivers actually have two ears. You can screw them right to the back of the sub. You can use two receivers with one transmitter. So you can run dual subs. So in a place like a restaurant, home theater, living room, whatever, where you want more bass, you run two of these guys. Kind of a cool feature. I really, uh, really like that. Yeah. Does that come with the other side of the Balin? No. Yeah. You have to buy our audio Balin, or anybody's audio Balin, but yeah. Okay. Um, you have to buy a transmit Balin. Will the wireless sub kit work for any sub? Yes. Yes, it will. So, just the transmitter. Yep. These are sold individually, so yeah, you can buy just the transmitter, just the receiver, whatever you need. I meant for the panel. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. That's all right. So yeah, you can get any of those things separately. Now we have a six and a, this is six and a half, and we have an eight inch as well. Okay, eight inch, obviously just a bigger woofer, plays a little lower, moves more air. So. Um, Anodized aluminum woofer with two passive radiators. It's 200 watt amplifier uh, built into this uh, this little guy, and it's approximately a nine inch cube. And you guys can see from the footprint and the ability to you know hang it from a, a speaker bracket. It's fairly lightweight, but it does perform very very well. Uh, 449. I'm sorry, 499 price point on that guy. Also, we're going to be giving away one of these today. So one, one of you guys is going to walk away with one of these subs. Uh, the SW8, it's 8-inch anodized woofer, 300-watt amplifier. Um, pretty much the same spe uh, features that you have with, uh, with the 6.5-inch. Uh, it's just an 11-inch cube. So really kind of... Uh, hidden gem. Now I wish we had a 10 inch that offered the same thing and they've talked about that. Uh, I haven't seen it yet but we'll uh, hopefully we'll see something like that at CDA. So some of the things that uh, we've already talked about, you know, wireless ready on these subwoofers. Um, you can see uh, built in Cat5 Balin. The mount, it's an Omni mount, 30.0 so if anybody wants to uh, use that mount. And then uh, here's the audio Balin that that works with, and you can use any of our audio Balins. So some of the other features, uh, you have multiple turn-on modes. So you've got a, an auto turn-on, an audio sense, voltage trigger, and always on. Uh, most of you guys will use uh, always on, just like every, you know, just like I do, and everybody else. But uh, Audio Sense does work very well. It's it's a quick turn on uh, as long as your receiver level isn't like really low when you turn it on. Um, uh, I don't remember if this one has sensitivity on it or not. No. No. Uh, and again, you can cascade multiple uh, multiple woofers off the same signal. Now, if you're doing these in a bar, you can cascade your Balins as well. So you can transmit out to multiple subs. Uh, international power supply, not that that really matters in the Midwest. Uh, we are ERP compliant. Uh, so in standby mode, you're using less than half a watt. Uh, variable settings from 50 hertz to 150 with a bypass setting. 
So these are some features that uh, are common to both the six and a half and the eight inch model. Um, of course, phase control and uh, it is a digital amplifier. Fairly efficient amp as well. Um, these things, for, for, what, for a digital amp, they really are powerful. Uh, LFE and line level inputs. And here's kind of a view of the back panel, which you also can get a closer look as well. Um, Preamp level and stereo audio inputs. Um, uh, turn on mode with uh, LED status indicator, so on the front of the uh, subwoofer actually. The Niles logo lights up, or lights up behind it actually. So, yes, it's defeatable. Um, and again, wireless port for your uh, wireless receiver. Any questions about the six and a half or the eight inch? What's the warranty? Uh, warranty on this product is two years, parts and labor. So, and also in front of you on the table, um, if you guys buy a subwoofer today, either the six or the eight, you get a wireless transmitter and receiver for free. So that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, only valid a couple days, so, um, but it is kind of a nice uh, added feature if you're doing any wireless subs. And again, you can use that wireless kit with this sub or with another sub, it doesn't really matter. <coughs> So outdoor speakers, it's kind of the season for outdoor, maybe not today, but yesterday was pretty good. The, uh, one of our big things is, uh, you know, we, we kind of invented the outdoor category uh, with outdoor speakers, the OS series speakers. And we've kind of expanded upon that with rock speakers and then ultimately garden speakers. So our garden speakers are, are only a couple years old. We've only had those out for a few years. We have two products in that lineup. It's a satellite or a pair of satellites and a 10 inch subwoofer, in ground subwoofer. Um, so it's a, a four inch mineral field filled um, woofer, um, one inch Teteron tweeter, a um, couple mounting options. You can either mount it on a wall or, or a pergola or you know post or whatever, or you can stake them into the ground. Uh, they play down to 70 hertz. So for a four inch, uh, it's not too bad. Um, and they'll take a ton of power. So they are, uh, they're kind of cool like that. They honestly, the more power you give them, they, they're, kind of, they're not power hungry, they're very efficient, but they, uh, they definitely sound better when you throw more power at them. So, uh, and then they come in pairs. So it's kind of a brownish color. Uh, it's not a black, more of a, a ground cover color, if you will. And uh, they retail for $400 a pair. So our GSS-10 subwoofer, 10-inch uh, sub, uh, bandpass, um, kind of a bandpass design. Um, frequency range is down to 25 hertz, and they'll handle a uh, ton of power. You can throw pretty much as much of them at them as you want. Uh, in the time that we've been selling these, the only thing that I've ever had to do uh, was take to take back was the, the mushroom cap on top. Uh, somebody hit it with their mower and can't stop the mower. So uh, these things do sound really, really good. Uh, the thing that I would recommend with these, and I think that this is a, a really important, is when you dig that hole, put some sort of a solid base down there, whether it's you know some sand or a little bit of pea gravel or something, just to give it a real solid base. When you uh, put the dirt around it, you actually get a much deeper base than you get when uh, uh, you're playing it outside of, of you know just in the open air. Do any of you guys have showrooms where you, or, you know, you use your house or whatever where you can show this off? It will sell it for you. It's, these things pound. They're awesome. They don't, and here's why. Because you can, most areas, um, 
you may have in a small area, you'd probably want to put four satellites in there and a sub. Larger area, you may put eight satellites and two subs. So no, it's all individually priced. Um, Do you guys sell an amplifier that goes along with that sub? Well, we did. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. So two weeks ago, a um, week and a half ago, something like that, these guys called me and said, hey, we need an SW500 amplifier. And so we ordered one for them. And I found out that we are no longer making that amplifier because we cannot get parts for it. So as of right now, I do not have a subwoofer amplifier for this system. However, you can use one of our 2150 amplifiers and bridge it down and use it for a subwoofer amplifier. So we do have that option. And we are looking at uh, uh, making an option available for you guys uh, through Skywalker to get the uh, speaker craft version of that amplifier, which we do have parts for and can deliver. So, 8 ohm or 4 ohm? 8 ohm. So I apologize, but we do not have an amplifier for this application. Now our satellites, you can run off pretty much any amplifier. It could be just a simple AV receiver or one of our 12 channel amplifiers or, you know, there's, there's tons of amplifiers out there as far as options go. We did look into that, Robert, and that amp you're talking about does mm -hmm. have an output so we can go into another two channel amp or four channel amp. Yeah. One pair, two pair, four pair of sats. Yes, yeah. yes. So you can expand upon that uh, with uh, the, the current amplifier setup. Unfortunately, I just don't have that subwoofer amplifier available at this moment in time. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> the hole has to be, it's 14 inches wide by 30 inches. Um, and then you got to go down a couple feet. Um, I think it's a minimum of 18 inches. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a it's a pit for yeah. And they're fun if they fail and you have to dig them up. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. We're kind of yeah, fortunately we don't have a lot of failures. Uh, we have a few. I'm not going to say we don't. Um, most of them uh, most of them do pretty well. We did have a, a the very first run of these when we first brought them out. Uh, the first 200 I think of them that went out had a faulty seal on them, so um, they were filling up with water it was it was a seal that was it was a seal that was on the end here and a uh, minor problem but you know what we haven't had a problem with it since they fixed that real quick replaced all of them so rock speakers so we have several different uh, rock speakers in our lineup. Uh, we have a 5 inch, uh, we have a 6 inch, and we have an 8 inch. And then we have five different colors in each of those. So um, a few options for you. So our most popular uh, colors are sandstone uh, and shale brown in this particular area. Uh, outside of this area, uh, especially towards the south, coral does very well. We don't do very well with it up here. Uh, granite does very well for us, and speckled granite surprisingly does really well um, in this area as well. So we have a geo-realistic no fade color and finish on all of our rock speakers. Uh, you guys have all seen the rock speakers that you go back a couple years later and the, uh, the paint has started to, to fleck off the, uh, the product. Well, we don't have that issue. Um, it's, it's a very solid product. We, uh, the material that we use is similar to Corian, so it's a really hard product. Uh, and they're, you know, it's molded uh, to resist not only weather, but also uh, staining and uh, the actual finish is not painted on, it's actually molded in. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, it's great for UV, you're not gonna get the fading, you're not gonna uh, see a lot of changes in the uh, uh, finish itself. So we also have an encapsulated crossover. Uh, a lot of the uh, more entry-level products that are out there these days just don't have um, some of the, the features that really are necessary for outdoor speakers. They don't have encapsulated crossovers. Well, you get a little bit of water in there. Uh, it could just be the sprinklers. It doesn't even have to be rain. Um, you know, it'll, it'll kill your speaker and it sounds terrible and, and so forth. 
Uh, advanced driver materials, we use, a, our woofers use a, a talc, carbon, and ceramic um, woofer material and a, a rubber surround. Uh, we have a cone forward design on our woofers. Uh, I'll explain that here in just a, a couple of minutes on the cone forward design. And then uh, we have direct burial rated speaker wire um, and we provide you with uh, silicone injected wire nuts. So all you have to do is wire to it with direct burial cable and everything else is there for you to, uh, to use. So we have um, our RS, because we're real clever, stands for rock speaker, um, our five inch. Pro Series, and this is uh, this is actually our third generation of this product. You can uh, drive these things pretty efficiently. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of power. Um, you know, you throw 25 watts on them, they're going to sound really, really good. Uh, but you can throw real power at them as well. Eight ohm impedance. We have a six and a half inch RS6 Pro. Uh, again, all these are available in all five colors. Same, uh, same uh, kind of materials for the woofer and the tweeter. Um, same power handling and so forth. We have a six inch stereo input speaker. So if you have a location where you don't need a stereo pair uh, and you just need stereo input, we have that available as well. We do not have that in the five inch, only in the six and the eight. So we have an eight inch SI Pro as well. Um, this one can handle a little bit more power. It'll play a little bit lower as well. So cone forward design. Um, one of the big things that happens with woofers is when water does get in there and penetrate the, the front of the grill, it just kind of sits there in the woofer and creates problems, okay? With our design, it's a, a, our cone actually doesn't concave back, it convexes forward. So you, it rolls up, you know, your water and, and things roll right off of it. And, Therefore, we have less issues with uh, water sitting in there. Um, it also sits closer to the grill, so you don't have that tunneling effect. It sounds hollow. Uh, when you're playing some of those speakers that have a recessed woofer, they tend to get a little bit hollow sounding, and narrow sound field, and, and so forth. Uh, with our cone forward design, we can push the woofer closer to the grill. It gives us much wider dispersion uh, on our, our uh, systems. Now we also have a um, safety strap on our rock speakers. Now this isn't super important that you strap down your rock speakers, but if you're doing a commercial installation, uh, a lot of guys want their speakers staked down. You can do that. Um, you can buy a safety strap just about anywhere or you can use steel cable. Uh, it just hooks right into, there's a kind of a, a hook loop that's molded into the uh, speaker itself. And you can mount those either with a stake or you know, however you want to, uh, to mount those. So here is uh, some specs on those rocks. So the five inch ones will play down to 85 hertz and uh, the six inch will play down to 70 hertz and the eight inch will play down to 50 hertz. So they'll actually perform pretty well. Now you can also, if you're doing a large backyard, use some of our garden satellites, our subwoofers and our rock speakers and tie them all together. Okay, so they can all run off the same amplifiers, gives you good performance pretty much everywhere that you uh, have the, uh, the speakers set up. They're very similar in sensitivity, um, so performance wise, they perform very well with each other. You're not getting some that are really loud and some that are not near as efficient, so they're not playing as loud. And they are. Uh, not extremely heavy either. Uh, because it's a molded plastic material, um, it, the, you know, it's, it's just not a heavy product, which is good. Um, we don't really want a rock to feel like a rock, just look like one. Uh, again, here's another view of that safety strap. Uh, in some commercial applications, I haven't seen it you know, in this marketplace, but some places uh, they make you anchor it in concrete or with concrete. 
so we also make a couple of planter speakers. Um, we have these in a terracotta finish and then a weathered concrete finish. The weathered concrete finish is the most popular here. Um, these guys, I think, have this on display downstairs. So it's, uh, quite honestly, we sell a whole lot of those things and uh, I've owned them before. They, they sound great. Um, come in a couple different uh, iterations, but they are stereo speakers, so uh, they're uh, pretty much awesome. And then we also have our OS line of speakers, and uh, honestly, I had a whole lot in my PowerPoint about that, and I'm sorry, but uh, last night I was at my hotel, and the power flashed off as I was saving my PowerPoint, and I lost all of my PowerPoint. So I had to go in and recreate this till about 1 a.m. this morning, so some of it didn't make it in. But our OS speakers, we have um, five inch, uh, six inch and eight inch in our OS speakers and uh, a couple different varieties in there. They all come in white or black um, and we do have a couple of stereo input uh, speakers as well. So these guys can get you that information if you have questions about that. And I'm sure some of you have used them. We've been using, we've been doing that for a really long time. That was one of the first speakers that we were very, very successful with was the uh, the uh, outdoor speakers. Again, military grade plastic, they just don't fade. The grills stay in. Um, you can throw a lot of power at them. They perform really, really well. So, any questions about our speaker lineup? How many speakers per amp? Four? Uh, d it depends on which amplifier. With our 12 channel amplifiers, you can use obviously up to 12, yeah. Uh, but with our two channel amplifiers, they're stable down to four ohms, so you can essentially put a couple pairs of speakers on our two channel amplifiers. So, okay, well, I think what we'll do is uh, I think we're going to do a couple of giveaways here before we jump into the multi room system. Where is uh, oh. Ever, did everybody uh, get into the uh, get a ticket into the? Ron, would you like to come up and pull uh, pull tickets? I think we'll do a Klein hat. All right. I'm my glasses on. Do I need to read these numbers? Okay. Can I read it? Uh, yeah, so the number is uh, 838-1938. Yeah, right on. Okay. What's that? <laughs> Last one. I shook, I shook him before I did it. <laughs> now we got somebody else showing up, so we'll, we'll get some more raffle tickets here, make it a little more interesting. Shaking it up good, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. I'm not even looking, right? I'm just grabbing. Okay. 8381937. Eric. Right on. I'll say you trip up. We'll give away one more thing and then we'll get back to some, some product. One more? Let's give away one more. Uh, yeah. I just threw them up there. All right, one more. One more. All right. Eight three eight one nine three two. Right on. Get you a nice little coffee mug there. Okay. So, any other questions with speakers before I move on? 
Okay, so the Niles Ariel uh, MRC6430. How many of you guys have used one of these before? Anybody? Okay, well, let's learn about it. So Niles has been in the multi-room game for quite a while. Um, we had our ZR6 system our, uh, years ago, our, what we called our Gloria and our Bob system, which were real simple to program uh, multi-room systems. And uh, then we had uh, kind of a, a little bit of an evolution of product, uh, and we jumped into uh, our ZR4 products and then our ICS products. Well, about three years ago, they had this great big tsunami and knocked out a huge factory that supplied a lot of parts for us. And unfortunately, we were not able to source some of those parts. So we were kind of out of the multi-room business for a couple years. Didn't have a system at all. Uh, and in that time, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things developed, um, especially with network products. So as you guys are, I'm sure, aware of, networking is becoming an everyday thing in your business. And uh, this is not going to be any different. We are uh, adding, we have added a uh, multi-room system that works uh, on network. A little history, here's the uh, first uh, speaker selector that we brought out in 1979. Well, what's that? <laughs> That's a relic, man. <laughs> the, uh, you know, you had to switch those big JBL speakers back then, so. So we, uh, we also were one of the first people to bring out a whole house keypad that worked independently. You could program just the keypad. So, and in 2014, uh, right at the end, we brought out the Ariel system. And we've expanded on that quite a bit since then. Um, we have quite a few interfaces that you can use, plus it will tie in with uh, any Android or iDevice, so you can you know, use these with your phones. And that's right out of the box, there's no licensing or anything. So let's talk about this a little bit here. How many of you guys are doing multi-room systems? How many of you guys are doing home theater systems? How many of those systems work together? few, not as many as you'd like probably. Okay, well our system actually does both. Okay, so you can actually do home theater control as well as uh, multi-room control from the same box. Now you can only control one home theater, so it's not when you get into a larger system or your larger home where you have multiple systems, won't necessarily work for that. But for a moderate size home, it's going to work perfect. Okay. So before the Ariel system, you kind of had whole house interfaces, nothing wrong with that, uh, and home theater control. Um, but it was not a good experience for your customer. They were confused. One thing worked one way, one thing worked another. With our system, you actually have a whole house system interface and a home theater interface that are consistent. Your customer can understand it. Okay, they, they get that. They like no change. So this is how we, uh, this is kind of the Ariel chassis and how it works. It is a six source, six zone controller with four amplified zones. Now this is important, okay? Four amplified zones, so eight channels of amplification, okay? Why did we put eight channels of amplification in a six ohm piece? Yes. How many of you guys would like 30 watts going to your outdoor speakers? Would you rather have 50 or 100 or 150 going to your outdoor speakers? I know most of your clients would. Okay, so that's what we did. We gave you the ability to have pre-outs and go directly into a Niles amplifier or somebody else's amplifier. So let's say you're doing that um, outdoor system and it's got an in-ground sub and a couple of satellites and a couple of rock speakers. You can put a 12 channel amp on there, run all that product all off one output for your outdoor zone. Or you can zone it as two zones. So you have that capability to split it up as well. 30 watts per channel on the, uh, on the uh, amplifier 
at 8 ohms. I don't recommend that you bridge it down. I, I recommend just using one pair of speakers on it. So, um, it is, but it's not recommended. So, take that as you will. Um, we do have preamp outputs for all zones, so if you do have a uh, you know, a lot of high-powered speakers, those, those old JBLs we've been talking about, somebody wants their big amplifier on them that they've had for years, that's fine. You can hook up their, their amp. Um, Best-in-class platform for programming, and it is really simple, guys. Uh, we'll talk about programming here in just a few minutes. Uh, dedicated user interfaces. That's a, you know, we've got touch screens, we've got keypads, home theater remote. Um, again, works with iOS, Android, PC, Mac, doesn't matter. Um, home theater control, it's a wizard based programming and a huge IR library. Um, what, we, what I mean by huge IR library is we use the exact same library that Core Brands has built for their Elan control platform, okay? So it's an extremely extensive IR code set. And they're adding new codes every day. Uh, so we have an outside source that adds all our codes for us. So it gets done pretty quickly. Um, we have also the same thing going on with IP controlled drivers. Um, we have an outside source that does it. We are now actually releasing some of that to uh, some of our higher end programming dealers that are doing some of the long control systems. And they're adding devices in once we've tested them. Um, this is important. Uh, IR drivers are extremely important, especially now that you're getting more and more things out there that are, you know, IR controlled, or I'm sorry, IP controlled TVs, um, you know, switches, things like that. We're going to see more and more of this. Uh, projectors, there's lots of projectors that are starting to come out with IP control. This is going to be a lot easier to, to program than the old days. You don't have to worry about IR getting flooded out because of, you know, too much light or anything. Will you be able to control roof-mounted Peseta switches with your IP controller? The answer is yes, you will, but not yet. It's coming. They have not opened up uh, lighting for this product yet. It will be coming, though. And yes, Caseta is one of them, okay. along with uh, Pulseworks and, um, and uh, I don't know about Insteon. I'll have to check on that one. Uh, but uh, pretty much all the Lutron product. Uh, well, if you have IR drivers for Insteon, you're good. Yeah. And if nothing else, you can learn the IR drivers in. So. Ah, one other thing. We do have multiple IP source drivers, including Sonos. Now, anybody out there using Sonos? Okay. Um, so there's a couple things. Let's talk about Sonos for just a second. Sonos is a great product. We are one of the only manufacturers that actually has a deal inked with them so that when they do their updates, we don't necessarily have a broken driver like other manufacturers that are out there that kind of hacked the, the product. So they do update us on a few things. Now, in stating that, we did have a broken driver when they brought out their changes at Cedia. It broke for less than 24 hours and we had it fixed because they were working with us. It's my understanding, and I am not a Sonos dealer or any you know, association with it at all, it's my understanding that they are going to a cloud-based programming platform in June, okay? I do not know how this is going to affect the programming with this product how it works or anything else. But it's my understanding that, that the guys at Core Brands are thinking that there could be a problem with potentially with our driver, but more so with everyone else's driver as well, because they, they aren't working with Sonos like we are. So just be aware of that. I don't know a lot about it. All I know is that that's coming. So system integration. Of course, you can use our architectural speakers, uh, our outdoor speakers, our accessories, Bayland, audio Balins, things like that, IR. We also have interfaces. So our interfaces, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about the interfaces a little bit. We have a seven inch touchscreen. Um, we have a uh, four inch touchscreen. We have a seven button keypad. 
and we have a handheld remote control. The remote control can only be used for the home theater zone, okay? This is important because I know a lot of people don't necessarily want, you know, they may be in a kitchen or something or a bedroom and not necessarily want touchscreen control, they want a remote for this application. You cannot do that. So, it is expandable. You can do up to 12 independent zones. Still only one home theater, still only six sources. You can cheat the sources a little bit. If you want, uh, if you're using a receiver that has second zone, you can kind of cheat it a little bit. So integration of home theater and media room, consistent interfaces. And you, you ask about the lighting, you can see there's, there's lighting on there, thermostat control. Guys, those are all coming. Um, it's not quite here yet. I've seen it actually work. Um, so I know it works with lighting. It's just a matter of when they release it. Um, and HVAC control. Now, one other thing, upgrade path. So with all of the Aureo product, it, there's an upgrade path. So. Being a sister company of Elan, you can actually put an Elan controller on top of your Ariel system, and it will control everything just, just like it uh, uh, did before as far as your audio goes. However, you get a lot more functionality. Your touchscreens are the exact same touchscreens. So it doesn't matter if you put in a Nile system, when you put in the Elan controller, it's going to load Elan onto the touchscreens and you program the Elan. So there's a lot of cool interfaces. Same thing with the, um, you know, your Android and iDevices, your touchscreens, your keypads, your handheld remote, it's all the same. Um, so with Ariel, we have a media interface that allows you to tie in with Pandora, Deezer, uh, TuneIn Radio, Sirius XM, all through either Sonos, uh, S1 Media, or S1 Digital, um, Fusion, which is kind of going away, I understand, uh, Autonomics, all those drivers are available for streaming, as well as uh, a few of the IP-controlled AV receivers. I believe Onkyo and Integra, uh, I know Yamaha, um, I'm also the Yamaha rep, so I'm very familiar with that product. And uh, with Yamaha, it's the only product that you can stream it uh, with second zone and not affect anything in your main zone uh, because of the way Yamaha does their networking. What about Marantz? I don't know if it does it with the streaming from Marantz. I'd have to check. It didn't when it first, when it first came out. And uh, I've, I've got to be honest, I don't have a ton of Marantz dealers. So uh, here is kind of our lineup of um, devices. Now you'll notice up in the upper corner here, this is one of our touchscreens. It's one of our seven inch touchscreens, but it is mounted uh, vertically. So why mount something vertically that normally is horizontally? Bars, uh, commercial buildings, things like that. It's a lot easier for those guys to understand and when you program it and set it up, you can actually set it up to where it's easier on and source selection for them by putting it vertically, okay? The other thing about the seven inch touchscreens, they fit into a double gang box and they're POE, so you do need a POE switch. Uh, or they can work wireless. So you can power them locally and then do wireless. Uh, not as reliable, wireless isn't quite as reliable as hardwired obviously, but it does, uh, does give you some options. It comes in a white touchscreen or a black touchscreen. You do have to order it that way. Um, same thing with the four inch, however, if it's in a single gang box, okay? Now, if you are mounting it vertically in an installation, keep in mind, a double gang or a single gang is different height and width, so you need to make sure that you turn the box the correct way when you put it in, uh, if, especially if you're you know, doing a, a rough end. And then we have our single gang uh, keypad, 
again, black or white, it's a seven button keypad. Comes with uh, buttons in the box so you can change them out or you can also get custom engraved buttons. Okay, so buttons are, I wanna say $5 a piece. Uh, they take about three weeks to, to get done. They get done here in the US, uh, up in Seattle. Some guy that sits around and, and makes little chiclet buttons all day. Great job. Um, again, your interfaces with uh, your Androids and iDevices, tablets, phones, doesn't matter. All of those interfaces look exactly the same as what's on the touchscreen. Now, I said earlier, there's no licensing for that, okay? So out of the box, if you buy no touchscreens, no keypads, you can use the interface from your iDevice or Android device. So that's available right away. So this chassis costs $2,000 retail. To give you six zones with touchscreen control via your phone or, or tablet, that's a pretty good price, okay? If you wanna add more speakers and amplifiers, you can do that. So you can expand this system. It's a great system for that. So here's a close-up of the handheld remote control. It is a Wi-Fi remote control. Um, it does have an IR sender on the front, so you can program it to do both. Uh, that means you don't necessarily have to run an IR sensor to the TV. You can just send out an IR signal to it, okay? Programs over the network. Um, once you do the initial setup, it's pretty easy, actually. You can not only control the home theater zone, but if you'll notice here, there's a rooms button. You can also control any of the rooms that you have set up on your multi-room system. So it doesn't matter if it's two zones or 12 zones, you can set that up as well, okay? Built-in IR blaster for line of sight. Uh, again, if you've got your TV in the room, maybe a cable box or local source or something like that, you've got the ability to control that. Configures in the Ariel software. Does ship with a battery and charging base. Uh, the battery is uh, it works really good. This remote has been in the Elan line um, for about seven, eight years. Um, I've got four of them at my house. They work awesome. Uh, I've never replaced the battery in them, and they last. Um, when, did the, when did the charging base come out? Same time the remote did, eight years ago. About eight years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you can charge it without the base. You can plug directly into the remote if you pull the cover off the bottom. But overall, uh, this is, it's always shipped with it. Do you guys have the patent on that, on the charging base? I think so. Yeah. I mean, again, they brought this out in the Elan line eight years ago, and it's still the current remote in the Elan line. They, the only thing that they've changed is uh, the rooms button and the home button are the only two changes that have been made in eight years. Uh, obviously, firmware and things like that, but bulletproof, guys. These things work every day with networks, um, and, and they're awesome. I, I use them at home. Just programming them on the remote or does it live in the main system? Lives in the main system. So if you're a integrator and you come in after the fact, say the guy dies, mm -hmm. and you come in, can you upload from the main system and make changes, or do you have to add the original file? Nope, you can pull it from the uh, system. So this is our seven inch touchscreen. Um, now there's some things built into this that are really cool features. Um, proximity sensor. When you walk up on it, it's going to come alive and, and light up. That can also scare the hell out of people. Uh, it is defeatable, so you can turn that off. Most people don't. Um, again, we kind of talked about some of these things. Uh, works, again, over IP. Uh, as well as wireless. Now I don't have a slide on the four inch. The four inch is essentially same look and feel. The only difference is uh, you can kind of see right here there's uh, the proximity sensor. There's also a camera built into this. It's more for the Elan product than the Niles product. However, the four inch has all the same features, just no camera, okay? And that's mainly to do with the intercom features that are available in the Elan line. 
Here's our seven, uh, seven button keypad. Uh, comes in white, I apologize, we also have light almond, so it's white, black, and light almond. Um, again, you get a bunch of, uh, a bunch of buttons in the box. You can kind of change things in and out. Uh, your favorites buttons, if you walk up, you can do a press and hold for an audio scene. So if you have something specific set up, like let's say you've got uh, Alanis Morissette playing on Pandora, and that's your favorite, you can just walk up, press and hold, just like a you know radio preset in a car. So. Is this thing that has intercom features built into it? With Elon. Oh, Elon. Yes. But the touchscreens are the exact same and the keypads are the same. So those features are there. They're just not available through the Niles line. So if, you, if you're interested in those, that's a whole other conversation. We can have that afterwards. So any questions about the keypad? When lighting does come out, by the way, you will be able to take and program a lighting scene into that as well. Just one? Multiples if you wanted to. So here is kind of an overview. This is uh, what you would ultimately see as your GUI. Uh, it is a pretty basic, simple setup. You can go in and change the names of zone one, zone two, zone three. You can make it whatever you want. You know, kitchen, living room, master bedroom, whatever, okay? So those are all uh, changeable in the programming. So, I mentioned earlier wizard-based programming. So, how many, how many guys have done wizard-based programming before? <laughs> pretty much everybody, right? So, essentially, your setup is pretty simple. You can do it from a mobile device or a touchscreen. You don't necessarily have to have a computer, okay? So you can walk around the house and program with a tablet as you're setting the levels in the rooms and things like that. It is very, very simple to do. In most cases, you can program an entire six zone system or four zone system and a home theater in about 20 minutes. Um, it's a, a really easy program. So first you go in, you configure the chassis, you tell it, I got four zones, that's all I'm using. You configure your sources, you configure your zones. So when I say configure your zones, that's where you're gonna go in and name those zones, okay? You can also set turn on levels, um, you know, you, all your settings are pretty much in the, that same page. You configure your home theater. So if you've got a home theater, all you have to do is go in, configure it all right there in the, in the uh, setup. You configure your handheld remote control. Now this you will need a computer for. Uh, you will have to plug into it with a USB uh, and uh, it downloads one time and then that's it. It's pretty, pretty straightforward on that. You configure your keypads and that's it. It's that simple. The system actually, like I said, the first time I programmed it, it took me about 20 minutes to do a, a small home theater, four sources, a TV, and a multi-room system with four sources. So I recommend that we have a programming guide. Uh, I thought these guys had it, I, they don't. I'm gonna give it to them today. So the programming guide is really easy to follow. Um, it's, uh, like I said, real simple. And I, do you guys have one of these set up downstairs or is it just in, uh, just stack, stacked, okay. So, any questions about that? You got questions. Systems, let's say you expand, let's say you have 36 zones in a house, mm -hmm. for instance. Can you put three of those systems in and will they all talk to one another? No. Uh, well, you can put three of them in, they will not all talk to each other. So you can, you can put three different systems in. Um, it's kind of a tough one because uh, there, there's really no good way to do it. It, it, it maxes out at 12. So, uh, but if you're doing, you could share sources if they're all in the same rack because you could loop out uh, things like that. But it, it could be challenging um, to set up that way. Are you doing a lot of homes with 36 zones? No. Okay. We just have one in particular. One in particular? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this system. Uh, may not be right for that application. Any other questions? No? OK. 
Okay. Well, let's do a couple more giveaways and then we'll jump into a little bit of Panamax. How does that sound?